Hello, I'm Vishali. Today I'm here with a new topic on operation research, and the topic is job sequencing. So, by the name, what do you mean? Is job is the task and sequencing the order in which a particular task is performed. So, this chapter is related to the sequencing, the ordering of the task to be done on behalf of any of the any of the machine okay now i have divided the given chapter in the four forms or you can see the four methods first method today i am going to discuss that is the m1 method under this category we will be discussing the questions related to n jobs through two machines okay now before starting uh, the chapter i want to just discuss few terminology few terms with you first term is job sequencing under job sequencing i have written so few points first is assume there are n jobs each of which has to be processed one at a time at machine M A B C. That means in this chapter, when you get an exercise questions, in the questions you will be having n jobs. That means the any number of jobs like three or five number of the jobs, and that jobs you have to perform. Only one job will be performed on the given machine. That means M one and M two and three so on. If you will be having machines, as we are discussing the two machines case. So we'll be having only two machines. So one job will be performed only one at a time on a machine. Okay. Now, next thing is the next point. Next point is the order of processing each job through machine is given. That means in your given question, you will be having the order of the processing of each job will be given to you. Okay, it will be according to the requirement of the question. In the question, this thing will be mentioned. Second, third point is the time that each job must require on each machine is known. That means how much time a job is required to complete is given to you in the given question okay the problem is to find the sequence of processing the jobs that means what you have to find you have to find the sequence in which order the job will be performed on the machines so that the total elapsed time what is the elapsed time elapsed time is the completion of that from start Till complete that means if a job is started or if you are starting a task that means when you start the task and when you complete the task the time from starting till completion okay the time from starting till completion is called as the total elapsed time that means when you have started and when you have completed your task the last means some the the time is called as the elapsed time for all the jobs will be minimum so you have to find the optimal sequence of the jobs so that you can able to find the elapsed time and that elapsed time should be the minimum or you can say the optimal elapsed time for the given problem okay i hope job sequencing these points are clear to you now after this starting with some of the few terminologies the terminologies related with the chapter itself first is number of machines what is machines and what is number of machines okay that means it means the service facilities through which a job must pass before it is completed that means the job has to be performed on any of the machine that means we have to do the jobs with respect to or with the help of something and that is called as the machine okay processing order processing order that means the job is to be performed the job has to be processed and it should be processed in a particular order that means one after the another so is the order in which various machines are required for completion the job that means the order in which machines is performing the job and they are completing the jobs that is called as the processing order processing time processing time means how much time a machine takes to complete the job okay it means the time required by each job on the each job on the machine that means how much time a machine required to complete the job or the time time by which the job is completed ideal time idle time on a machine idle means a waiting time when the machine is not performing any work the time for which the machine remains idle during the total elapsed time that means elapsed time is the from start till the end when the job is started till the 
completion of the job the total time is called as the elapsed time okay and in between how many times the machine is under the waiting conditions that means machine is waiting let the job comes or any some circumstances the machine is not working so that time is called as the idle time and the total time that means how many times the machine is idle in between the performing the full task that is called as the idle time for that machine okay now starting going to the next page the point fifth is total elapsed time total elapsed time the time between starting the first job and completing the last job it also includes the idle time that means when the machine starts the work and till the end machine finishes the job it is called as the elapsed time and elapsed time also include the idle time in it okay i hope these few definitions are clear to you by this it will more helpful for you to understand the chapter now after this some assumptions in some assumptions we have no machine can process more than one operation at a time that means each machine has to process only one process at a time after completion of that task the next task they can perform okay the next point is each operation once started must be performed till the completion that means if a job is a start or a task is started on a machine that is a machine will start doing any task and till the completion of that task it has to perform the work it will not take any of other task at the mid Uh, at the mid of the first task which it is performing okay now the third point each operation must be completed before any other operation which it must precede can begin that means if the perform if the machine is performing the task a and if it has to complete the task a only then it will start the task b it will not start the task b at the mid okay fine okay so after this moving to the next point the next point is there is only one of each type of a machine that means each and every machine should be unique according to the given question okay now after this starting with the algorithm that for solving the n jobs and two machine type of a question we have to use a particular algorithm the algorithm is called as the johnson's algorithm okay in johnson's algorithm there are few steps so today i am going to solve this n jobs and through two machines so for this we are using johnson's algorithm in johnson's algorithm what is there the parallelly i'll be solving the question as well so that it will be more clear to you we have given two machines the machine a and machine b and i is the time period okay the time for job i on machine a the time for job i on machine b that means the machine a and machine b is given first question is you have to find the minimum of the given time required by a particular job on the machines let's see how i'll be telling you with respect to the question parallelly the question is there are five jobs we have five jobs 1 2 3 4 5 each of which must go through the two machines we have the two machine machine a machine b now the job 1 is required the time 5 hours on machine a 2 hours on machine b like similarly for job 2 machine a require 1 hour and machine b require 6 hours to complete okay so this is the processing time in hours and this is job and this is mach machine a and machine b i hope this table is clear to you now after this table the question is what you have to find is determine a sequence of five jobs that will minimize the elapsed time that means how you have to perform these five jobs on the two machines so that the elapsed time should be optimal 
first thing so you have to find the optimal sequence that is the first question second question is to calculate the total idle time for the machines in this period that means you have to calculate the total elapsed time and with respect to the total elapsed time you can able to find the total idle time as well okay now starting with the question the step one as I told you by the Johnson's method, in the Johnson's method, you have to find the minimum of the A and the minimum of the B time required. That means which job require the minimum time on machine A. First, we have to find this and before writing this, we have to write like this. Step 1, to find the optimal sequence. This is the step 1. To find the optimal sequence for n jobs and two machines problem. Okay. To find the optimal sequence for the n jobs and two machines problem. You will be making a boxes. How many box you have to make? You have to make the boxes equal to the number of the jobs given. How many jobs are given? Five jobs are given. So I have made the five boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. In this I will be writing the sequence in which I have to perform a job. So that I can find the minimum of elapsed time. Okay, so after this I will tell you one thing, you will be writing like this, A of minima here and B of minima here. Okay, we will be start writing like this, the minimum jobs, the minimum time taken by the job A and the minimum time taken by the job B will be starting from right to left and this will be start from left to right so that we can get the best optimal sequence of the jobs. In this, first you have to check the minimum of A and minimum of B. Okay. Now, after this I will tell you what happens when there is a case of a tie. Now, for job 1, A machine requires 5 hours, B requires 2 hours. So, in machine A, the minimum time taken by a job 2 is 1. So, we consider the job 2 okay for a so i will be writing the job 2 here then after selecting this we will go for the machine b machine b the minimum time taken is the job 1 job 1 is taking the minimum time so in this case we don't have any time okay if we don't have any tie so we have to select this we have written here so that means we have to cross out this particular column okay now we'll cross out this as well because b is taking the minimum time for job one okay so i'll be writing the job one here from right to left as i told you now second now which job is taking the minimum time job 4 is taking 3 hours so i will be selecting 4 so 4 i will be going to write after 2 so i will be crossing this like this okay now it is a turn for job b alternative you have to find the minimum of a then minimum of b now for this 4 and 7 which is minimum 4 so that means job 5th is taking 4 hours after selecting 5th job i will be writing it here then i will be crossing it like this okay now only 3rd job is left so i will be writing the 3rd job in the mid so i hope this sequence is clear to you so this is the first question determine the sequence so this is the optimal sequence according to me and according to requirement of the question now after this the second question is to calculate the total idle time for the machine in this period in this question as there is no tie so i am explaining you the format okay now if there is the case that if a k is minimum at i equal to k do the kth job first that means the same if we will getting the any of the minimum jobs so that minimum hours minimum hours required by that job the job will be written here so we have done this now moving to the next point the next part of the question in the next part of the question it is that you have to find the total idle time now what is the total idle time so before starting the total idle time or the elapsed time i want to explain you the table you have to make a table in the table you have to write the idle time processing time time in 
and time out okay so these four things you have to write for every these four things you have to write for the every every machine okay so this is the table jobs machine a machine b job okay so we have to write the optimal sequence of the jobs like 2 4 3 5 1 okay now as in this question there is no tie so i am just explaining you the general criteria for johnson's method in the next question i will be explaining you in case when there is a tie between the completion hours for machine a and machine b with respect to the jobs that means if the job more than one job require the same time on the machine okay so how we'll proceed that we'll be discussing in the next video in this video we are ex i'll explaining you the case when there is no tie now machine a and machine b first i'll be writing the idle time processing time processing time is given in the question okay like these are the processing times for a particular jobs which i already explain you in your book maximum books they have given only time in and time out and you have to calculate the idle time accordingly after completion of the full question but i have written this column if you want you can write it if you want to skip you can skip this column okay this is not a necessary but this making my work easier so i have added this column okay idle time and the processing time so first we can write the processing time parallelly with respect to the job which we have selected like for job 2 the processing time on machine for job 2 the processing time on machine is 1 is 1 for job 4 it is 3 for job 3 it is 9 hours for job 5 it is 10 hours for job 1 it is 5 hours okay now similarly i'll be going to write for machine b job 2 it is 6 hours job 4 it is 8 hours job 3 it is 7 hours job 5 it is 4 hours job 1 it is 2 hours okay so these are the processing time now the third point in the given johnson's algorithm if there is a tie for minimum value okay so the case of the tie is there then we have to select the jobs which has the minimum value for b so this third point and the fourth point is for the tie that we'll be discussing in my second video and after that cross the already assigned the jobs that you have already done while finding the optimal sequence and arrange the remaining jobs okay so after getting the optimal sequence this is the method for finding the optimal sequence after finding the optimal sequence which i already make you understand that you have to start writing the minimum hours taken by the jobs this you have to write the jobs which take the minimum hours for a machine from left to right and for b machine from right to left you will get your optimal sequence theek hai after obtaining the optimal sequence you have to make this table for idle time for table you have to write on the left most side the jobs then for machine a idle time processing time time in time out this column i have added from my side means in some book it is given in some of the some of the authors have only written time in and time out okay so first i have written the job sequence then the processing time for a and processing time for b now start solving this question now as i have told you few assumptions that machine a has to start one job and after completion of that job only machine a can process the second job i hope that point is clear to you so we'll be keeping those points in the mind so let the machine a start solve performing the job one that means during this time idle time is nothing because the job is not started so time in when the machine a starts the job one is initially we take the time in as zero okay when we take the time in the total time taking by the job two is one hour so how much time it takes to process this job is one hour zero plus one is zero okay so total time taking is 
is the completion of the job so after one hour the job will be completed so now for machine a i'll be doing first then we'll be performing for machine b now the machine a will perform the job second that means job 4 and the processing time is 3 hours so after 1 hour okay so that means machine a after completion of this only can perform the job 2 so for job 4 there is no idle time for machine a is no it is not idle because it is starting the job 4 so now time in is when the machine A is free, machine A is free after 1 hour. So that means time in for machine A is 1 hour. So 1 hour plus 3 hour, how much time it will take? 4 hours. At 1 it is started, for more 3 hours it will be doing work. So that means it will be doing work for 4 hours. Okay, so 4 will be the total time when it finishes its work. Okay, now no idle time for machine A means after completion of this is start with the third job. Now third job is the new job. So that means there is a new idle, no idle time. Okay. So machine R is continuously doing the work. One hour kia, fifth it's be doing work for four hour. Now the time in will be the four hour. Okay. So 9 plus 4 is till 13 hours it will be doing the work. Till 13 it will be doing the work that means the time out for the third job is 13. Now no idle time. Now 10 hours is the processing time for the fifth job. So time in for the fifth job will be 13th means till 13th I had done the work at the 13th it will be free. So that will become the time in for the fifth job. 13 plus 10 hours. So, till 10 hours continuously it has to perform the fifth job. So, total time is 23 hours. After 23 hours it is free. So, this is time out when it is free. Now, when it is free, so new job will be performed on this. The job is 1. No idle time for 5 hours. That means 23 will be the time in. So, the time out for the job 1 is 28 hours. I hope this is clear to you. So this 28 hours is the time out for the job 1. This is the work done by the machine A. Now for the machine B. In machine B, after completion of first task on machine A, only the first task will be performed on machine B. So machine B is waiting for 1 hour for the job to be performed so the waiting time is one hour so that means the waiting time will become the idle time for machine b okay so time in that means after one hour only the machine b starts the work so the total time out means six plus one is still seven hours it will be doing the work okay now till seven hours it is performing the work the machine b and the machine A leaves the job 4 at 4 hours. So that means the machine B has no idle time right now before, at the 4th job. Okay. And it starts the work for job 4 at 7. Okay. So 8 plus 7 is 15. Till 15 hours it performs the work. This will be the time out. Okay, you can say the total time out is 15. Now for the third job, the third job is performed on machine A is for 13 hours. That means in this case and machine B is performing the time till 15 hours. Though that means there is no idle time for machine B. Okay, so 15 will be the time out and 15 plus 7 is 22 hours is the time out. Okay, now 22 is the time out that means machine a we have to see the machine a machine a is performing task 5 on machine a till 23 hours okay so one hour will be the idle for machine b machine b has to sit and wait for one hour to get the job 5 to be performed so that means time in will become the 23 okay 23 plus 4 is 27 at 27 
okay the time out is 27 so when 27 is the time out and here 28 is the time out for the new job so for the job 1 28 is the time out for the machine A. So that means it can only perform the job 1 machine B after the completion on machine A. So that means it has to wait again for 1 hour. So 28 is your time in. So that means it will be become 30. Okay. So 30 is the final time out. That means the total elapsed time. The total time. When the job starts, from the job starts till complete is the total elapsed time. So, for this question, total elapsed time is 30 hours. So, this is the total elapsed time. Okay. Which they have asked in the question. Now, you have to find the idle time. Now, idle time for machine A. There is no idle time for machine A. Okay. This is the one you have to see with the respect of this column. Then, at 28 hours, okay, so machine A finished its work. At 30 hours, machine B finished its work. So, the total idle time with respect to machine A and machine B becomes for A is 30 minus 28. That means its idle time is 2 hours for machine A. That means the machine A is waiting for 2 hours not doing any work now idle time for machine b i told you with respect to this column we can find so 1 plus 1 plus 1 that means this is the idle time for machine b machine b waits for 3 hours so total idle time in the given question is 5 hours so they have asked for idle time and for the elapsed time so, this is the total idle time and the elapsed time which you have to find. So, according to me, the question is over. I hope the question is clear to you. Okay. In my next video, we will be discussing about the tie when there is occurrence of a tie in the question. So, please like, subscribe and share my channel. And you can post your query in the comment box below if you want any other topic to be covered in the operation research. Thank you.